Hello and welcome back to Two Day Pass. If you subscribe to the channel, thank you very much. If you haven't, make sure you do and ding the bell. A like on the video will help me out tremendously and let's go. So my name's Scott and what I'm here to do is to try and help you pass your driving test first time by showing you a test route at Mill Hill Driving Test Centre. Hendon and Mill Hill actually share test routes. So if you're doing your test at Hendon or Mill Hill, this route will actually be more or less exactly the same. So let's get started. You're in Mill Hill Car Park here. It's very far away from the actual test center. So if it's raining, like I said earlier, bring an umbrella because you'll get wet. It's a long walk. Now, what I've done is checked all around the car, started the car obviously, and moved off safely, making sure the examiner knows I'm taking precautions, doing my observations before moving off. Now when we reach this point, it's a bit hard to see if there's an oncoming vehicle, so when you do enter or exit any test center car park, do take care. Quite commonly when you go in and out of some test center car parks, the visibility isn't great and they can be quite busy areas in industrial car parks or industrial parks and yeah you might even get lorries coming towards you i've got a mirror here on my left in the bush so i hope you can see that on the image that's going to help me to see if there's anybody coming round this bend like i said coming in or out and visibility being very poor and quite hard to see at the end of the road turn left mirror mirror signal left and take it nice and slow here very difficult to see to the right so what I'm doing here is called peep and creep. I'm moving forwards very gently, just to see a little bit more. And when I can see, I know if it's a safe time to drive out. If you walk out, you would drive out. It's exactly like you would do this if you were a pedestrian. It's just that you're in a car. At the roundabout, turn left, mirror, mirror, signal left. Any traffic on the right? No, it's very far away. I've got my signal advising everybody around me where I'm going. So that's going to help them to enter the roundabout. I saw it as free opportunity for me and I took it. So when you approach junctions, what kind of speeds do you want to approach junction at? Is it a running speed? Is it a jogging speed? Is it a walking speed? And that's the difficult part about teaching people to drive and learning to drive because the speed will vary. We're never entirely sure. Turn left, mirror, mirror, signal left. And we're never entirely sure what exactly to do. So the way you want to make a decision is based on the amount of space and the amount of visibility. So the more you see, the more space you have, the more speed you can take. So, you know, base it on what you can see. If you want to work the other way around, the less space, the less speed, the less see, the less speed. So this is what I advise all my students. This is the top two rules of learning to drive. Here I'm keeping one meter from the parked cars, checking my mirrors, there's no more parked cars and there is oncoming traffic. So I'm moving back over to left. Less space here of the oncoming car. So I'm starting to gently adjust my speed, slowing down. Looking further down the road, I can see there's a parked car on my side, checking interior mirror, right mirror, moving out into the center of the road, keeping one meter from the left. Interior to the left, interior, exterior to the left, interior, exterior to the right, Moving in, moving out, around the parked cars that we see here. At the end of the road, turn right. So mirror, mirror, signal right. Position close to the center of the road or the island here that you can see in the middle. And then we come to the end, come to a stop and make a decision on whether it's safe to actually drive out. So would I drive out? Mm, I'm not too sure. How do I know when it's safe to drive out? What's the question I can ask myself to know whether it's a safe time to drive out? If you've already said it, brilliant. You're more than halfway there to actually being ready to take a driving test. So the question is, would I walk out? So I'm checking and then I'm seeing an opportunity to walk out. And that's exactly when I want to start to accelerate and go. Don't hesitate. Wait, have a good look, see the opportunity. And when it's there, take it. Okay, I'm going to turn left at the roundabout. So I'm going to do my mirrors. What two mirrors would I check for signaling left? Interior and exterior left. And after I've checked my mirrors, I'm going to signal left. I'll position into the left lane because I'm going to turn left at the roundabout. Nice and easy breezy. So not too complicated for a left turn at the roundabout. 
and no doubt at some point on your driving test you're going to get a left and a right turn keeping one meter from the parked bike moving back over into the left lane huge gap no traffic coming on the left uh, sorry on the right hand side and i'm turning left so here we are onto dual carriageway now what is the speed limit i see a 50 mile an hour sign i'm accelerating if you're in a manual car my question is why don't do it do you need it all right i'll shut up if you don't need it don't do it everything's going electric everything's going automatic best decision i ever made was going automatic if you want it done quick and easy and for the rest of your life automatic 50 mile an hour but i'm approaching the junction now can you see the countdown markers the green rectangle the free white line and it says you know cues likely traffic light coming up ahead and i'm turning right at the roundabout mirror mirror signal right Moving over, there's no traffic. I double check by looking over my shoulder into my blind spot. Third exit, turning right. If you're not sure what lane to use, use the right lane. Now I know we're going towards tot, 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 tot. This is Apex Corner. If you've been here, Mill Hill or Hendon, you will know what Apex Corner is. It's a roundabout that's really busy and it's half controlled by traffic lights. So as you go around this roundabout, do take care of the traffic and the traffic lights as they might suddenly come to a stop. So there's lots to take in here, guys. Let's start it now. We've got the green light. Checking my mirrors again. Signal is applied. I'm in the right lane. I'm looking for tot and I'm taking the third exit turning right. So can you see tot? There's tot. Right lane to right lane. Pass first exit. This is a spiral. Look at the actual road markings. I'm following the road markings. Mirror, mirror, signal left. I'm relaxing the steering, allowing the steering to come out. And there we are. I'm off the roundabout. If I was going to turn right, I would be in the very right lane. But I haven't been told to do that. So I've positioned into the left lane. And now we're back on a dual carriageway. It's 50 miles an hour still. And if it's safe, I need to make my way back over to the left lane. Unless I'm overtaking or turning right. So if you can't exit into the left lane when you leave the roundabout, that's okay. You can stay in the right lane. And then when you make your way further down the road... When it's safe to move back over to the left, you want to move back over to the left. If you don't move back into the left lane and you're not, in capital letters, overtaking and you're not turning right, you must be in the left lane. If you're not, you will most likely fail your driving test or what's called position normal driving. Another reason why you might fail your driving test on a road like this is speed. So currently while I was talking, you might notice a lot of the vehicles going quite fast. I'm doing 46 miles an hour, which is okay. This is a 50 mile an hour road. Five miles an hour under or not really over, but for a driving test, you might get away with it. Um, is okay, but 10 miles an hour under or over is not okay. There needs to be a reason why you're driving so slow. There is no excuse for going over the speed limit, but for going too slow there is, because the vehicle in front of you is going slow, you can't go any faster, that's okay. Maybe weather conditions, road conditions, these are all reasons, visibility, for reasons for slowing down. But if it's clear, dry, and everything's free flowing, you must get yourself back into left lane and get up to speed. Okay, it says reduce speed now, roundabout coming up. I'm going to turn right again. Mirror, mirror, signal. Now the vehicle's coming extremely quick behind me, so I'm not going to move in front of that vehicle, but I'm taking the opportunity to move across now because the vehicles behind that vehicle were quite slow. Have a look at the road markings here. We're going right on the roundabout. So are there any road markings? Yes, there are. Are there any signs telling us where to go? No, there isn't. So I'm going to check my mirror's signal, and I'm going to do this by the textbook standard. So we're taught when we learn to drive, and the highway code mentions this if you're turning left you use the left lane if you're turning right you use the right lane and i'm turning right third exit so i'm using the right lane 
This is another very big roundabout. What I'm doing here is taking the third exit turning right to try and help you to understand what exactly you need to do. Now the most important part is as I'm coming up towards the second exit. So the first exit's on the left. A lot of the time people don't count that because they don't see it because it's so soon. Now look, second exit, this is perfect. Look at the road markings. Nice straight arrow with a right arrow in it. This is my lane because I'm going right. There's the second exit, and this lane did all the work for me. Now that I pass the second exit, relax the steering, make sure you keep to the left, mirror, mirror, signal left, and there you go. You've exited the dual carriageway roundabout. It actually wasn't that complicated because we had very nice road markings there showing us the lane. All we did was follow that lane, kept the right signal on until we reach the second exit. Once we reach the second exit, we check our mirrors, internal, left mirror, signal left, start to relax the steering, and that will allow the car to gently just make its way out and over into the left lane, making it easier for you to be on the safest side when you exit the roundabout. Now, show me, tell me questions are something that you will be asked on your driving test. So we do a tell me question usually at the beginning of the test. So can you tell me how you would know your headlights and taillights were working? Yes, so turn them on walk around the vehicle to check to see that they're working thank you very much show me question can you show me how you'd wash your rear window now this would all be done as you can see i'm just pushing a button on the move these are quite technical questions so make sure you practice them with your driving instructor at the traffic lights turn right mirror mirror signal right position into the right lane start to slow the speed of the vehicle down Oh, wow, I can't believe I'm here. See the oncoming car? I'm watching. It's slowing down and stopping, and now I'm turning. Look at this width restriction. Nice and slow. I'm watching the right pole only. I'm making my mirror and my right pole literally just a few inches apart. If I know that the mirror and the right pole on the right-hand side is a few inches apart, I do not need to concern myself about the left pole because in a regular vehicle like a car, you are small enough to fit through. If you're a van, you would need to watch both sides very, very carefully as vans are a lot wider. Downhill, I'm holding on my brake. Could you see the oncoming vehicle went into the center of the road because of this bicycle here? So when we see something like this happening in the distance as a bicycle, what's the oncoming vehicle going to do when they reach the bicycle? What is that going to make me do? This is the larder routine. Now, it's very complicated to start off with because none of this information would have been said to you before. It's all new and it all starts to sound really complicated. But we're looking ahead, larder, look, assess, seeing what's happening. Oh, there's a bicycle. The car oncoming is going to go around the bicycle or may go around the bicycle now we're deciding what do we need to do now there's only three actions you can do when driving that's slow stop or swerve so in that situation with the oncoming car and the bicycle the oncoming car went into the middle of the road what action am i going to take on that occasion i just slowed because i couldn't swerve and move that's what swerving means another bicycle look at that um, to move out of the way for the oncoming vehicle. So the only action I could do was slow down. Now you can do all of them. You know, it can, situations can change, but you'll definitely be doing one of them at least. So you either slow, you either stop, or you either swerve, or you might start to slow, swerve out the way, and even stop. So there you go. There's an example of doing all three at the same time. Okay, so nice narrow country lane here, pretty much. Country lanes usually don't have pavements. This does, but it's semi, semi there, country lane. At the traffic lights, turn right, interior mirror, exterior mirror to the right, signal right, roughly 10 to 5 car lengths from the junction. We've got road markings here telling us that this lane goes both directions, and we're going to the right towards Mill Hill, back towards the test center now. We're more than halfway through this test route, not much more, and you'll see how I get back into the test center at the end. Now, a lot of test centers do have very tricky car parks, either on the actual route, you might be asked to enter one of these difficult car parks, 
or the test center itself, which is very common. So do practice with your instructor, if you can, driving in and out of the test center. Now you might not be able to do this all the time, so I'm here trying to make this video to at least show you what entrances to test centers look like, so that you've got a good understanding if you're not able to actually drive in there with your instructor, because tests are ongoing, and we would be an inconvenience to other people taking the test, another sign there for Mill Hill, um, then you won't be able to go in. So that's the reason why. Okay, we're just going to keep going straight here, guys. Oh, there's a fire down there. Green light, keep going. Nice pub. Um, not that I drink, but, you know. It's a shame all these pubs are closing. Some of them have really nice gardens. You know, kids can play. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Did you just see that? My... The bumps on this road are horrendous. Take the next road on the left, mirror, mirror, signal. Oh, it's so tight. Ah! Now there's turns like that. So you're coming down a hill, very steep hill. What gear do you want to be in? If you're in a manual car, oh my God, don't get me started. You want to be in first gear. So I'm trying to help you guys in your manual cars. I don't know why, but anyway, so you're slowing down, braking, clutch down, first gear, clutch up before the turn, engine braking, holding the brake on. Make sure you've done your mirror signals. And then, why are you talking over me? And then you do your turn, nice and gentle. Now, if you're in an automatic car, you won't. You just literally hold the brake, do your turn, finished. Okay, so we're almost back at the test center. Uh, taking the next road on the left, mirror, mirror, signal left. Beep. Another sharp turn. So like we said, if you're in a manual car, you'll be gearing down, clutch down, maybe 100 meters out from the turn, start to change into a lower gear, raise the clutch, adjust your speed early, mirror, mirror, signal. Do your turn. If you're in an automatic car, mirror, mirror, signal, gently brake, do your turn. Okay, so here we are at the end of the road. I'm going to be turning left, and then we let's talk that through. So if you're in a manual car now, you'd be braking, left foot down on the clutch, changing left hand into second gear, up on the clutch, engaging second gear, engine braking. The whole time you've done that, you'll be holding the brake. I used to compare it to juggling. So what you're doing is you've got like four different balls, four different limbs at the end of the road, turn left. They're all working at the same time. So it's just like you were trying to juggle four balls. Now in an automatic car, you're juggling two. So it's a lot easier. So what you're doing is just doing steering. You, you, one hand if you like, okay? But don't do that in the test. And you're braking. So one foot brake, one hand steering, two. When you're doing manual, you're doing four. Right foot, brake, left foot, clutch, left hand, gear lever, right hand holding steering, all at the same time. So, make your decisions, right? Taking the second exit on the roundabout. Now, I need to take the second exit straight, but it actually looks like I'm going to need this Ah, this is good. So, we're almost back at the test center now. You might come back this way. Now, the very left lane, which we would normally use to go straight, looks like that is going to be a left only. It hasn't said it, so let's see. I'm in the middle lane. I'm following the middle lane. And is the middle lane becoming a left lane? No. So, you can use that left lane. If you use that left lane, the lady behind me looks like she wants to do it as well, you'd come around and into this lane. If you use the middle lane, then you would have been in the lane that I was in previously. So it does depend on what lane you use. You can use both lanes. I wasn't too sure, so for that reason I used the middle lane because it looked like the left lane was going to be left only. It's a big roundabout. There was three um, lanes on the entrance to the roundabout. Sometimes on a big roundabout with three lanes on the entrance, the left lane could be left only. This is why videos like this are very valuable to you guys. All you have to do double the amount of lessons and have a very good memory. Take the next road on the left. 
But with a video like this, it's free. You can rewind it. You can look back over it. You can see everything in slow motion and in detail. And at the same time, I'm giving you the advice that you need to know. Okay, car was over the uh, line in the center of the road. So I was preparing to come to a stop, adjust my speed early. No more oncoming vehicles now, I can continue. Did you notice how I checked my mirrors as I was moving back out? then you're very, very good. You're an eager beaver, right? I'm over the middle. I'm going to try and move back in as I get close to that car. There was a gap. So I had option A before and I had option B behind just where that last parked car was. So I could move in, stop at option A, but because the vehicle beyond, and we've been talking about this on this video, uh, was further back, I could move on to option B. Uh, which is okay. Um, I could possibly stop at option A. The only bad side to stopping too early, if you can make progress, is if a vehicle behind you is following. They're able to see through your vehicle, around your vehicle. They can see the road ahead. They can see that the oncoming car is quite far away. So they're looking to maybe make more progress. And if we stop too soon, especially without checking to see who's behind us at the end of the road, turn right. Mirror, mirror, signal right, position into the center of the road, stop here if it's not safe to cross the road, and make an assessment. Would I walk out? Mm. No, wouldn't walk out. So, yeah, I think you get the idea of what I'm saying about option A, option B. We don't want to stop suddenly at option A if we can keep going, especially if we don't look to see who's behind us. Would I walk out now? Yes, I would. So off I go. No hesitation. On the gas and off. It's as easy as that. Manual car, you know how it goes. Juggling again. So, yeah. Where we all are different, we all have different needs. Um, it all depends on what you need and what you want, and you make your decisions based on that. So, whether that's manual or automatic, ah, we're back, we're back, woohoo! You don't know how happy I am to probably can see how happy I am to be back at the test center. Turning right, mirror, mirror, signal right, and that's what you'll feel like when you get to the end of your test. You're like, oh, I'm back, yes. I'm back. And then he'll say, you've passed, or she. And then you'll be like, yeah, even better. Right, I'm taking the next road on the right. Look at these two idiots here. Do they need to push out that far? No. Forcing me to go into the middle of the road where I'm not supposed to be. This is where I'm supposed to be. And I only move in after the actual um, arrow behind me, which again, I'm not putting on all the cameras today, guys. Um, but my other videos, I'll be able to show you all these markings. So there's an arrow before that I'm not allowed to go into past that. No one coming around the corner. I can see from the mirror. Uh, and I move into the arrow that's from me for turning right back into test center. So what I'm trying to stress is make sure you do not go over the road markings that are not for you. If you do, you will fail your test for driving over road markings that are not for you. Okay. All right, so here we have it, back to the driving test center. If you watch the other video, you know the bay park in here. I'm gonna do a forwards bay park. I swan necked, moved out, moved in, got my reference point, done my full lock steering. At the end of your test, switch your engine off, and that is the end. I have been Scott. I hope this video has been of any value. The whole way through, I've been asking you to write in the comments below. If you have any questions, please do so. Do so. Do so. I'm making up language now. Do so, and don't forget to leave a like on a video if I have helped you out. I've been Scott. This is Two Day Pass. Stay safe, stay tuned, and I'll see you next time.